Hi everyone, we're here in LA at Universal Studios for the first ever hands-on gameplay event for Jurassic World Evolution. My name's Ed, I'm part of the community team here at Frontier Developments and I'm joined today by lead designer Andy Fletcher and executive producer Rich Newbold. So obviously, like I said, we came all the way out to LA for this. It's been a really, really special event. We've been working on Jurassic World Evolution for, for quite a long time now. And today, we've been finally able to show the game off to people outside of Frontier. So how has that felt for you guys who've been working on it for, for so long? It's been amazing. We were really proud and excited to be working on this game, and it's been amazing just to see people's response to it after seeing that, the gameplay for the first time. Yeah, it's been fantastic. The, the feedback's been really positive. You know, the game is what people wanted and and more so you know it, it's it's just so good seeing that reaction after so long working on it and not being able to talk about it yeah so yeah, it's great to finally actually be able to share yeah. some of the yeah. details with people uh, so for this video we thought we would show off uh, the gameplay demo that we've been showing to people behind the scenes so we've been showing the press and content creators uh, some of the features and a bit of a sort of slice of the Jurassic World Evolution gameplay uh, so I suppose why don't we just jump into the game right away and uh, and show people what it's all about so Rich, I think you can uh, set this up, but uh, where, where are we in the, in the Jurassic world? So you're part of the Hammond Foundation there, entrusting you with the five islands uh, that last in Colton Wittes. And the first island you get given is Isla Matanceros, which is like a little starter island. Um, this park is a bit built up uh, to begin with, just to allow us to, to demo. Uh, we've already got, I mean, you can't make a Jurassic game without dinosaurs. Uh, it's kind of like the key thing. So in our part, we've got a couple of brachiosaurs already uh, in place. But you, you know, the key thing is the dinosaurs. So we have a dinosaur ready in the Hammond Creation Lab just to just to show you what we've been working on. So we've been putting a lot of attention and detail into the dinosaurs to make sure that these dinosaurs are the best dinosaurs you've ever seen in a video game. Uh, we've put a lot of work into how they look, how they move, how they sound, and how they behave. Um, this is one of the key things for us to make a game that's just it's amazing to look at. So there's our Ceratosaurus. He seems fairly happy there, munching down on the on the meat. Um, so I think, uh, in addition to the dinosaurs, there's uh, a load of structured objectives that you can do in the game too. So uh, I'm going to uh, complete this active contract, what we call a contract here. So we've got a science contract active here to perform an expedition for at least one herbivore fossil. Now contracts are uh, jobs that you undertake for one of the three divisions in the game. So we've got science, entertainment and security and this is for science so this will improve my standing with that division and that will lead to further uh, unlocks and further consequences later down the line. So I'm going to head to my expedition centre and look at the expedition map. It shows me all the dig sites I've got available around the world. So one part of the game that we're, we're putting a lot of detail into is the authenticity of the game. Um, the dig sites that you're using in the game are based on real world dig sites and the fossils and the dinosaurs that you find in there are based on real world uh, science. We want it to be as real as possible. And there's a lot of information about the dig sites themselves and the lore of the game and the dinosaurs that you're engineering, but we keep all of that stuff inside an in-gen database, which is like a repository of information that if you want to get access to all that depth and detail, if you're a big fan of that kind of uh, aspect of the Jurassic franchise, you can go into here and start reading up about, you know, for instance, the formations in the game, and you can see when these formations were formed in the world, uh, when you, what you can find inside them and the dinosaurs in there. So it's, it's one part of the aspect of the game that we're, we're putting a lot of detail into. Cool. All right, so I, I'll kick off an expedition. I think I'm going to go to Hell's Creek because that's got Triceratops fossils in it, and that means that it should return with a nice herbivore fossil. So my expedition chopper is going to head off there and uh, kick off that expedition. Now, I have released a dangerous carnivore here into my herbivore enclosure, so that's not a great idea. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and move this uh, Ceratosaurus to a smaller enclosure of its own uh, over here. Uh, now I'm going to create that enclosure first, so I'll head to the fence tool uh, and start building the outline of this new enclosure. The Dresser World Evolution is a management game, and it's about you're building these facilities and expanding them out as you progress through the game. And he's using one of the creation tools, which is the fence tool, which allows you to really quick and easily make uh, these enclosures for your dinosaur. So he's using this light steel fence to begin with. Uh, as you progress through the game, you get access to sturdier fences and then electrified fences, just to make sure that the new dinosaurs that you're engineering are really, make sure that you're kept inside the enclosure because 
they're not inside, that's when the running and the screaming happens. So it's the key thing of the game is to make sure that your dinosaurs are kept away from your guests. Cool, so I've got a basic uh, fenced enclosure there. Now I need to make this more of a home for the Ceratosaurus, so I'm going to put some water in. So it's got a water source that it can drink from. So if I head to the landscape tools, I can create really easily create a quick uh, water source for it to drink from, keep it, keep it quenched. Um, and then if I go to the nature brush, uh, I can add uh, forest um, and this will make it feel uh, more at home in its habitat. So uh, different dinosaurs have different kind of uh, habitat needs uh, and I'm going to put those in to make it feel more at home. Uh, I can also, while I'm in here, I can also adjust the slope around the uh, enclosure so I can raise, lower, flatten, smooth terrain, um, which is kind of cool from an aesthetic point of view. You see the, the fence actually conforms to any uh, terrain edits that I make. Um, and then to finish off the enclosure, or to make sure at least that it can be, um, it can be got to from my ranger teams, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, mm -hmm. uh, I'll stick a gate here, and that allows the ranger teams to drive in and out with their 4x4s, uh, which is really important for dinosaur welfare, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, and then finishing touch, I'm going to add a feeder in here, because our ceratosaurus is going to want to eat something when it's touched down. So I don't know if you covered that there, but this, uh, the, the, the offences that you're placing down uh, they look kind of sort of, they don't look like they're going to be particularly strong against some of those those larger dinosaurs. Are these things that you can upgrade and, and, and yeah, get more? Yeah, so you need to make sure that the fences that you're placing are appropriate for the dinosaurs you're trying to keep behind them. So that the, the smaller herbivores, you can get away with a light steel fence. But as you say, the, the bigger dinosaurs, the ones with more teeth, you know, you want to make sure that they're really they're kept in. So you want to make sure that your fences are as strong as possible. Yes, this is exactly what we needed. Well done completing that contract. So I've now boosted my science reputation by completing a contract because my expedition chopper came back and that's unlocked something for me to hit. I've got an interesting opportunity for you to consider. It will allow us to work together to create life, pure life. If you've been listening to Dr. Malcolm, then you know how important this is to us and to me. All right, so this is the head of the science division. Uh, offering me a mission, which is a, a, a multi-stage um, series of objectives which uh, uh, take longer than the contracts to do, but they, uh, they have greater rewards and, and more sort of narrative depth to them. So I'm going to start this mission and see what's, what's involved. I knew you were my kind of person. Inquisitive, driven, and I knew you couldn't resist this opportunity. So let's get started. Together, we can create a more authentic version of our dinosaurs. That means a complete genome. And I think you are up to the challenge. Don't disappoint. OK, so the first part of this mission is to acquire 50% of the Triceratops genome. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to head to my fossil centre. It's where all my uh, dig site finds get delivered. And uh, see here, I've got a, a very high quality amber fossil, which will give me Triceratops DNA. So when I've extracted this DNA, um, I should have uh, enough to complete this section of the mission. So another option there as well to sell. Uh... So you can sell them just to gain money, and that will, uh, yeah. So that's there's kind of a trade-off there, is you can focus just on the dinosaurs or use fossil uh, dig finds for uh, you know, short-term financial gain. Um, one part of the game that we're really focused on is not just making sure that the dinosaurs are the best dinosaurs you've ever seen, but the environments that they inhabit are amazing as well. So we put a lot of care into the building systems as well as the islands themselves. So each island has a lot of um, work and attention being done to make sure it looks amazing and as it can be. And we put work into a weather system as well. So as you're playing through the game, there's different weather events that might happen, things like light rain or heavy rain. Some of the later islands have more extreme weather events. So um, there's a lot for you to do there. These things aren't just aesthetics things though. The, the tropical storms that might hit you later on have a gameplay aspect. They might come and knock your fences out. They might come and take out your power station. So there's, there's things for you to be worrying about as you're managing not just these, these dangerous dinosaurs in your facility, but things that might cause them to escape. Now we need to incubate, hatch and house our dinosaur. Then we will know if our efforts will have been worth it. Okay, cool. So my uh, fossil was extracted and that meant I've got uh, enough of a Triceratops genome to incubate a Triceratops dinosaur egg. So if I go to my Hammond Creation Lab, I can see all the available genomes I have. Uh, I've only got a few here, obviously this is just the start of the game, um, but one of those is my newly available Triceratops. So I'm gonna incubate that right now for this mission. So 
this is going to be my herbivore enclosure. I've got two big herbivores here. I've got another one on the way. So I've got to make sure that this Ceratosaurus is not around when, uh, when all those herbivores are roaming because, uh, yeah, he's quite a dangerous animal. So in order to move him to my new enclosure, I'm going to head to my ACU center. And this is where I can give commands to my ACU chopper teams. So if I head over here and click on the Ceratosaurus, they will start flying off and they will try and tranquilize him so that he can be safely transported. Now, a really, really nice element of Jurassic World Evolution is that although I can manage these uh, vehicles from far, um, I can also click on them if I want to and take direct control. So I can, I can interject whenever I've asked them to do something and try and do it myself. Um, and since on, on PC, we've kind of designed the game to work seamlessly with controller and with uh, keyboard and mouse, so I can just switch to the gamepad and all the menus and all the interfaces and all the controls are going to work just as well. Like immediately as well, there's no, oh, yeah, there's actually no switch there at all, yeah. You can do it, Andy. Uh, no pressure. Nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> We really wanted the dinosaurs to behave and move in realistic ways, so just the way they look and the way they move, the way they fall when you, you tranquilize them. Um, I feel a little good. bit sorry for him now. Hurts. <laughs> her. I do apologize. Yeah, yeah, all absolutely. hers. All right, well, she's safely tran uh, tranquilized. Now I need to transport. So, transportation is also now at the ACU center. Uh, now, a really quick way to go between buildings is to switch to the schematic view, the map of the island. Uh, and this shows me the, the whole island area I've got. And I can really quickly see my dinosaurs, my vehicles, state of my buildings. It's really, really useful for quickly accessing buildings. Um, and here I'm going to get in touch with the transport team and ask them to transport this Ceratosaurus from its current enclosure into the new one that I built. And that poor goat that you, you created earlier doesn't know what's coming. It might be fine. <laughs> it, it might be fine. You can't assume that the Stratosaurus is going to go over it. Might out outlive. You never know. <laughs> you never know. A good hider. There she goes. Can you, can you name, name the dinosaurs as well? Yeah, you can name uh, the buildings in the game and the dinosaurs themselves if you want. If you just want to have that personal connection with the, with the animals. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to get a personal connection with a carnivore, but the option's there for you. Each to their own. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, she's on her way. So now I can safely release my new triceratops into the herbivore enclosure. Our new specimens, sorry, dinosaurs, are meeting expectations, but we want them to thrive. That's your next assignment, making sure our specimens are properly cared for. In other words, dinosaur welfare. The difference with dinosaurs is that they have no point of reference to understand humans, so don't expect much in the way of thank yous. And another part of the game that we're really excited about is the opportunity to a Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. He's uh, reprising his role of Dr. Ian Malcolm, and he's throughout the game. Yeah, he's there as a narrator, as like a voice of conscience. You're going to be making some decisions in the game as to which division you're pursuing the missions for, and there's going to be some consequence to that. And he's there just to remind you that there's a, these dinosaurs should never have been brought back. It's been a mistake from, from day one, mm. and that there's going to be a consequence to some of these decisions. And you just can't keep some things like that in your enclosed and they will always find a way to escape or something will find a way to just go wrong and he's always there just to just to keep reminding you of that fact it's, it's been it's just such an amazing thing to, as a developer to, to work with someone like him in, a, in, in one of our games cool all right well this next stage of the mission is all about uh, as the head of science said uh, dinosaur welfare so it wants me to build a ranger station so i need to make a bit of space here because my uh, my island is, oh, 
just uh, <laughs> adding less yeah, space. Adding, adding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what you need to do before you build, before, when you start expanding your park, you need to kind of clear the ground so that you've got space to build on. So I'm just clearing some forestry here. And this is costing you money to do so. This is well. costing me money. So I've got, to, I've got to build up the funds before I can really expand and make a, a huge, huge island park. Um, so yeah, you might need to flatten the terrain as well if it's, if it's rough and uneven, which is another factor. So this looks like enough space. So I'm going to put my ranger station down and these guys are going to help me look after my dinosaurs. Mm. Jurassic World Evolution is a management game, it's a builder game, so you have to use these tools to expand out your facilities and you have to worry about things like an, inf an infrastructure system in your park as well, making sure that your buildings are connected together so that guests and staff can access them and also that there's a power supply to these buildings, so there's a concept of power in the game so that you've got to build these power stations and connect up pylons to make sure there's enough power to make sure that your buildings are operational and that you're, if you have electrified fences that there's electricity running through those because they're not going to be much of a deter deterrent if there's no electricity in them, uh, so your dinosaurs might be more likely to escape from them. That's right, and then additionally, on some of the buildings, you'll have a number of upgrade slots. So here you see you've got five on the ACU centre. Uh, and what I can do is I can purchase uh, components that I can put in there, and they will uh, augment the efficiency of that building. So they'll make my ACU team um, better at tranquilizing dinosaurs automatically, for example, or uh, allow me to give them more tasks at once. Uh, the power station has upgrades, as you saw there, for things like output and, and cost and management, things like that. So um, that's a really important uh, way to kind of uh, maximize the usefulness of each building. Uh, but it also has implications for how much power is being drawn on your power system and how much money you're spending, of course. Okay, well, my ranger station uh, and the lovely 4x4 is now built, ready to use. But the next bit of this task is to increase my Triceratops genome. So I'm going to go back to the fossil center, find another Triceratops fossil and extract. And that should create a more pure strain uh, Triceratops genome for me to, uh, for me to uh, satisfy the science division with. And in the game, it's not just about just making dinosaurs and putting down buildings. We have a research system in place as well, so that as you progress through the game, you can research new things for you to build and add to your park. So as Andy was mentioning with the building upgrades, that's an aspect of the research system as well. You can research new upgrades, you can research new fence types and medical treatments as well. The ranger station that we just put down, they're tasked with medicating your dinosaurs if they get sick, but you need to make sure that they've got access to the relevant treatments and the vaccines for that so that's one part of the the research system as well so they can do their jobs and because it's a Jurassic game we have we're trying to be faithful to the authenticity of Jurassic science so you're taking these genomes of dinosaurs from long ago and then combining that with modern DNA to try and fill the gaps so that we can create these uh, dinosaurs so you can research new gene types and that will then change their base statistics or you, know, you can change how long they live for and things like that or you can change their cosmetics genes as well, so you can change how your dinosaurs look as well. Okay. Right, so my uh, fossil that I just extracted should be finished now. And that means that I can, yeah, so I've got a, I've got a more pure strain Triceratops here, 77% genome completion. Uh, I'll incubate him, but just before I do that, I'm going to modify his genome and show you the genetic modification options. So along the top, there, that's a representation of the genetic se sequence. And in there, there's a number of gaps. So um, each of the gaps is currently filled by tree frog DNA. And that's not doing a whole lot for my, uh, for my dinosaurs uh, traits and stats. So I can switch out this one, for example, for a toughness gene from a different animal, and that will make it more uh, defensively capable. So should it get into fights, it's going to, with other dinosaurs, um, it could more likely survive if I add more of these kinds of uh, genes. Uh, this is a lifespan gene, so this is a really useful one. It means that my dinosaurs are more likely to live longer if I add, add more lifespan. Um, these all in increase the incubation cost of the dinosaur and the, uh, slightly reduce the likelihood that it's going to be successful as well, which is quite an important factor. Um, but I think that's enough modification just to quickly show up. And I'll, uh, I'll incubate that dino. And that should be, once this research is complete, the last step in the mission. The game is not just about dinosaurs and the dinosaur welfare, you know, it, we're at Frontier where we've got a history of making management games and park builders, so you have to worry about your guest needs as well, making sure that they're you know, as happy as they can be. We have multiple buildings, ones for like operation type stuff like the ranger station, buildings for your dinosaurs and buildings for your guests, so you need to make sure there's 
fast food restaurants in there to make sure that they get enough food. And then you can adjust the things that they're selling and the prices that they're selling and that so that you can make profit. So you need to make sure that your parks are maximizing the amount of profit because that's how you get access to expanding out your park, new buildings, new dinosaurs. So there's a lot of different things for you to be uh, managing in the game or worrying about and just making sure that everything's running as efficiently as possible. And a lot of these things feed back into a thing we call the island rating, uh, which is like a measurement of how successful you're being on your current island. And that all then feeds back into a progression system with the, the five islands that you've been tasked with. So this is on Isla Matanceros, the first island. If you, true, if you prove yourself with this island, they're going to give you another one and then another one. And these islands aren't just the same again. They're going to have different challenges and different aspects to them to, to really challenge you. So some might be quite a small area, so you have to be quite efficient in how you're building in that area, so a bit of a challenge. Some might have really extreme weather event, effects that are quite frequent, so you're going to have to deal with a lot of storms and that taking out some of your facilities, or um, power outages. There's just going to be a lot of things for you to worry about. But as you progress through those islands, you're going to get access to new research, new fossils, new buildings, new dinosaurs. And then you can always go back. So if you're on Island 4, for instance, you get access to a new, di new dinosaur, you can go back to Matanceros and put that dinosaur in that island to improve the rating of that island, which then opens up more things for you to play with. So this is just a, a glimpse of what's on offer in Jurassic World Evolution. We're really proud of it. You know, our Ceratosaurus is nice and happy now, <laughs> about to have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. They seem to be getting away with it. Oh, that goat is far too brave. <laughs> So thank you guys for that amazing gameplay demo. Uh, it really does look absolutely amazing. Uh, and it's not that long before people can play Jurassic World Evolution themselves uh, because the game comes out on June the 12th, 2018, which really isn't that long away. It's, it's very, very exciting stuff. So follow us uh, on Twitter at JW underscore Evolution. Find us on Facebook and subscribe to this YouTube channel for all of the latest Jurassic World Evolution news. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon.